Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review. Now I'm here today to talk about the second part of Batman The Long Halloween. Right from the start, let me just say, I don't care for this movie at all. In fact, I don't even care for part one. Um, I've talked about it before in part one, how basically this entire comic book that is based off of is just a ripoff of Batman Mask of Phantasm. Like, literally, it is. Like, go watch the video. However, here's my problem with the main, or with this movie. See, okay, I don't like the animation. Sometimes the animation is okay. Like, it's pleasing. But other times, it just looks like cheap flash imitation. I mean, um, cheap flash animation. Um, also, I get what they're going for. They're going for that whole comic book look, and it has that. And it's very interesting, and at times, that's what's very pleasing. But it's the movement I don't like. Like, everybody moves in that cheap flash animation. And there are times where characters will literally be still for a very long time, and they look so flat. Like, they have no depth to them. The only time it's ever good is when there's a fight sequence. That's when it's actually really animated. Another problem I'm having with this movie is that, like, if it was live action, it will be fine. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, actually, it has been a live action adaption of this with The Dark Knight. And it's about to be another one with The Batman. And so, it's like, you know, like I said before, if it was live action, it would have been fine. But there is one glooming problem I have with this movie. And if it was live action, I would still have a problem with that, too. And that problem is Batman. This is literally probably the worst adaption of Batman I have ever seen on screen, animated wise or live action wise, whatever. Like I could not believe how terrible Batman is in his second year. Like, okay, like I get it, you know what I'm saying? He's in his second year of crime fighting. Therefore, he's not going to be great. Therefore, he's not going to be the Batman that everybody knows and love. That's totally fine. Like, I'm totally okay with that. If, if there weren't other characters around him that are outshining him in every step of the way. Like... Batman is a terrible detective in this movie. He is a terrible fighter. And he is terrible at like just combating it type stuff. Like like running on rooftops and stuff. Like the dude nearly killed himself and Catwoman had to save him. Everybody was able to figure out who the holiday killer was. Or at least have the inkling of who it might be. Except for him. Like, he literally doesn't find that out until towards the end of the movie. When somebody says one thing and then he sit, um, sees something. And it, it makes him literally just ponder and think for him the entire time. Where he broods just like standing up and stuff. And he's able to figure that out. And it's kind of like, dude. Everybody was able to figure that out before him. And it, it's, just, it's just embarrassing. And it's like I said in the title. Two-Face and Catwoman are the stars of this movie. Like, the movie should have been, like, named after them and should have starred them. Because they were doing everything way better than Batman. Like, okay, I'll give you some examples of why I feel Batman got nerfed in this entire movie. And why everybody was just outshining him. Okay, so. Now, in the comic book, Calendar Man is in the comic book. For the most part... In this movie, I really don't see a point in having Calendar Man in it, especially if they were going to change what happens to him in the uh, from the comic book. But I get why he's in the comic book because you know this holiday killer is killing people on actual holidays, and he is the Calendar Man. Like he is literally obsessed with like days of the weeks and stuff like that, and holidays and stuff. So it makes sense that might be his mo and stuff. So I get why he's in the comic, but as for in the movie, and I get why he was murdered in the comic book. But in the movie, he's not. In the movie, I'm pretty sure, like it's hinted, but I'm pretty sure he knows exactly who the holiday killer is. 
but he will not tell Batman, which pisses Batman off. And he literally tells Batman, you know, let me out of Arkham and I'll stop holiday for you, which pisses Batman off and he leaves. And then when Harvey goes to Arkham to free everybody, Calendar Man is left there because, you know, he picked the wrong side of the coin and stuff. Now, he is murdered in the comic book because, like, yeah, he knows who the Holiday Killer is. So the Holiday Killer wanted to just eliminate him in case he says something. Also, it was great for the viewers because it's kind of like, okay, and people, and also for Batman, because it's kind of like, okay, people assume it's Calendar Man, but then when Calendar Man dies, Batman's kind of like, well, crap. Now, who do I blame this on now? <laughs> you know, because, like, he thought he knew for sure who it was. So now he has to go back to the drawing board and try to figure it out. That's really great. And they should have done that for the movie. But for some bizarre reason, they didn't. Calendar Man even lets Batman know that the Joker has escaped from Arkham because the Joker is about to kill the Holiday Killer. And because even the Joker has a feeling who he thinks might be the Holiday Killer. Everybody in this whole movie pretty much assumes that it's Harvey Dent. It makes sense. He hates Falcone. He really wants to um, put Falcone and his entire family behind bars. He is literally obsessed with that to the point where he doesn't even pay attention to his wife. So the Joker assumes, you know, it's Harvey and stuff. But, you know, the Joker also kind of is kind of hinted that the Joker might, for some reason, suspect it might be Harvey's wife. But it's never really fully explained. But then the Joker figures, okay, he tried to kill Harvey. You know, that failed and everything. The Batman stopped him, whatever. But then he figures, hey, at this, I think it was New Year's, I think it was. He figures that, hey, you know, all of the Gotham elites and half of Gotham is going to be at downtown at the ball drop. And he might as well kill as many people there as he can, which in his mind will eliminate the Holiday Killer because he assumes the Holiday Killer will be there and stuff. Batman was not even able to figure that out and stuff. And he couldn't even figure out why the Joker wanted to kill all them people at um, New Year's and stuff. And it's kind of sad when somebody who's supposed to be cuckoo in the head is able to figure at least have a good feeling of who it might be and Batman can. Jim Gordon, um, Harvey Dent, and Batman all working together to stop the mob, stop Falcone. Even Jim Gordon suspects it might be Harvey Dent and everything because of how obsessed he is. But Batman will not allow himself to think that way because Harvey is his friend. And it's kind of like... Like I said before, he's only in year two, but it's kind of like you're supposed to be like this crime fighting person. You're supposed to suspect everybody. And he does have like a thing on his back computer where he has like an opening for like Harvey Dent, but he just doesn't want to go down that avenue. Now, before I get back into the dents and the holiday kill and all this, I want to get into Catwoman. Because, yeah, like I said, she was like the MPV of like the entire like movie and stuff. In the first movie, like I stated before in the other video, she playfully led Batman to Falcone's warehouse full of dirty money and stuff. And Batman had no idea where Falcone stashed all his money out in the open in a giant um, abandoned factory and stuff. And she knew. And how did she know? Because she's literally been stalking Falcone. Why hasn't Batman been stalking Falcone? Him, Harvey, and Gordon have literally, you know, decided this is going to be their main priority and stuff. So you would assume that he would have been like keeping a close eye on him, but he didn't. Only Catwoman has. And so even she gives him the idea of burning Falcone's money to piss him off and stuff. Giving it to the feds will, yeah, piss him off, but he'll just get it back. But really put the salt in his wound is burning it. Then, as she led him there, they was like jumping rooftops and hopping on trains and all this other stuff. And she was jumping with ease and landing with ease, where Batman was slipping and falling. <laughs> and she literally had to save him from dying. And it's kind of like, like I said before, he's only in year two. I get that. But here's the thing. She's in year two as well, because this takes place after Batman year one. 
and then Batman Year One, Bruce Wayne became Batman first, and then Selina became Catwoman slightly after she saw him like Don Cape and Cal for the first time. And so it's like, and when she did become Catwoman, she really didn't do much in year one. And it's, so it's kind of like, so he came first and they both been training day and night, but she's better at it. Then in the first movie, she determines that Bruce Wayne is Batman. How? Like, I don't know. It's never explained. Somehow she just figures it out for some strange, bizarre way. Cause like she's been dating Bruce Wayne the entire time. And of course he's never there to date her cause he's too busy being Batman. And so she had to spend most of her time with Alfred and stuff, especially around the holiday. And somehow when she sees Batman at the um, yacht and everything, she just assumes that Bruce Wayne is Batman. She figured it out somehow. Now, in the second part of this movie, when him and her are talking in their mask, she takes her mask off to reveal her identity, and he first has a little bit of a stone look on his face, and then he plays it off. And it's kind of like, so wait, hold up. She knew who you were, but he didn't know who she was? Like, that, like, no, this is Batman we're talking about. <laughs> And for the most part, yeah, I'll give him credit. Selena Kyle doesn't have a grudge against the Falcon. Catwoman does, but he doesn't know why Catwoman does. Because she thinks that Falcon might be her dad and stuff. And but it's just kind of like, you know, you think he like after like you think like after knowing that she's been stalking him, that he would start keeping tabs on Falcon and see her and try to like follow her home or just try to figure out how, who she is, you know? But he doesn't, and we still don't know how she figured out he's Batman. Then, in part two of the movie, Catwoman is literally the star. She is whooping everybody's butt and saving people like a hero and stuff. Where Batman, once again, is getting his butt kicked. He got his butt kicked in the first movie. He got his butt kicked in the second movie. And so, like, okay, the movie starts off where it ended with the whole falcon and poison and everything the movie starts off when bruce has been spending his entire time with poison ivy it's been kind of weird in the public eye and people don't understand why that's going on and of course you know a lot of people can't stop it because she's really good at hypnotizing people and we see wayne manners covered all in like plants and stuff like that and we see Bruce there and Poison Ivy's doing her mind control thing. We see Catwoman break in and we see this huge tussle between Catwoman and Poison Ivy. Catwoman is beating the crap out of Poison Ivy, but it's hard because of all them plants moving around. And then she's able to free Bruce from the, um, the hypnotic thing by ripping the plants off him. Alfred was also brainwashed. And then so next thing you know, she explains to him like how long it's been with him like giving all his money to Falcone and hanging out with Poison Ivy. And it's like, he was never once able to snap out of that on his own. And nobody else was able to help him, not even like Alfred and stuff. And Catwoman, because she knows who Bruce is, she was able to like to save him and stuff. And it's kind of like, okay, this movie is set in pretty much present day because they got smartphones. Now there used to be a cartoon called The Batman on the WB Kids. And with that, that Bruce Wayne had a very high tech era thing. His suit was very high tech. When the episode with Poison Ivy um, brainwashes him, his suit, his vital signs um, will let him know that something is wrong and it will send an electrical pulse to his brain, snapping him out of the hypnosis. That would have been cool if they had done this for this movie and stuff, you know? Or you'd think he would have built that in or something, but they don't. Then, Batman is fighting Scarecrow, and Scare um, Scarecrow, like, um, you know, put his toxin on him. Now, that's fine. I'm cool with that. That happens in every Batman adaption there is. That's the one cool thing about Scarecrow. He's not muscular tough, but he can gas you and screw you up mentally and stuff. And so, you know, and he's able to gas Batman, and Batman's having a hallucination. And guess who saves him? Catwoman, again. And so she takes him back to Wayne Manor and everything where Alfred has to attend to him. 
And I remember like in the Dark Knight, at least then that Batman, not a Dark Knight, what was it? Batman Begins. At least there, Batman was able to call Alfred, you know, and Alfred was able to pick him up. In this movie, he wasn't even able to do that. He had to be rescued again by Catwoman. Then when Batman is talking to Falcone, Falcone gets to drop on him and pull a gun on him and, and literally is about to shoot him. Now this Batman does not have armor or whatsoever. He doesn't even wear a rubber. He's just wearing like cloth um, costume. And who saves him from getting shot? Catwoman. <laughs> and he literally tells her that's not necessary. Oh uh, yeah, well, you about to have your brains blown out and stuff. And it's just kind of like the dude wasn't even able to pull out a battering ring and knock the gun out of his hand. Uh, there's another scene. I think it was Harvey. He was, um, Batman was fighting Scarecrow and what's his name? The Mad Hatter. And they get the drop on him. They didn't gas him. So I don't know how exactly how they got the drop on him. I think they hit him from behind the back of the head or some crap like that. And I mean, come on, it's the Mad freaking Hatter, man. Like, that's just pathetic. <laughs> so while Batman's too busy, like dealing with them again, not out, Catwoman has to save Dent from some mobsters and stuff. Because once again, Batman's not there to save the day. It's literally her. Now, and then, okay, so then when Harvey becomes Two-Face and he releases the people from Arkham and he's going there to kill Falcone, Catwoman has to be there to stay the day again. But Batman is there too. And this time Batman is finally whooping some butt. And he does it in a great fashion. Like I love that, you know. But Falcone's daughter went over the ledge. And Catwoman had to save her. But the woman was so big and heavy that Catwoman ended up dropping her. Where was Batman? <laughs> Batman has more muscles than Catwoman. He could have pulled her up. And if he couldn't, he has a grapple gun. Like he could have just saved her that way. Batman in any other animation thing would have leaped head first, um, jumped off the roof of that building and saved that woman. And in this version, he doesn't. Catwoman had to at least try to save that lady. And it's just like, literally, Catwoman is literally the star. Now back to the dents. Harvey, like I said, he is high strong on taking down Falcon and he does it in a great like like fashion he tries it the way of the law and everything but he is unable to Ooh, my bad i just ew, it's, it's really late <laughs> and i am exhausted from doing all this hard work today anyway so yeah he's doing his best to try to stop like falcon and then when he turns into two-face and everything he decides he's going to do it the criminal kind of way. He's going to release all these crazy people from Arkham to make a distraction and try to kill Falcon. And if they don't, then he will and stuff. And so it's like Batman. Yeah, I get why he's trying to get, stop the holiday killers. The holiday killers killing all the Falcons and stuff. But it's kind of like you go to the head and, you know, and stop him and send him off and everything. And then you try to stop the holiday killer. Uh, you know, I guess you could try to stop the holiday killer first, but you know, whatever. Anyway, then there's a scene where Batman and Jim Gordon are down in Harvey's basement and they see the holiday killer's gun and a bunch of other stuff. I guess pictures of the Falcons and stuff. So they know for sure now. Now he's really to, really to suspect that Harvey is the holiday killer and stuff. And then as he's looking around, he sees stuff on the wall. Now, when he does confront Harvey about it, Jim tells him something about like, you know, we found all the guns in your basement and Harvey's just kind of like, what? And then, cause Harvey only has one gun. It's the one Jim gave him from the first movie. So Harvey is able to now figure out who the holiday killer is. He knows if all the guns are down in his basement and it's not his, it can only be one person, Gilda. Now, nobody wanted to suspect Gilda Dent because one, she's a woman. And two, they figured she had no motive to want to kill the Falcone. But she does, and they t changed it for the movie. Now, in the comic book, she is the second holiday killer. The first one in the comic book is Alberto Falcone. In the movie, Alberto is not the holiday killer and he gets murdered. Now, 
in the comic book and in the movie, Two Face is never the holiday killer. He kills people and he kills them in the Falcon, home, but he ain't the holiday killer. And it's kind of like, so, but he will take the fall for the holiday killer because he later on figures out who it is and he's willing to take the fall for his wife. Now, back to his wife. In the comic book, the reason why she went after the Falcons is kind of weak, but I get it. It's like, since Harvey is so obsessed with stopping the Falcons, he has no time to spend with her whatsoever. He will literally stop in the middle of like dinner to go do some like, you know, um, um, police type stuff to try to stop the Falcons. She is a lonely woman who wants nothing but her husband. She miscarried and everything like that. And it's just kind of like, she's kind of just like dead inside, but she wants to live again. So she figures, hey, if she can stop this big time crime boss, and his family members, then her husband will be able to spend more time with her. That is why she becomes the holiday killer in the comic book and stuff. Now the movie is a little bit different. Like I said, they took out that subplot and they created a new one that was hinted in the first movie, right before Falcon Alberto was shot. He said something about like falling in love with a woman. The only woman that we knew of now is Gilda. Now here's the thing. In the movie, she tells Batman that when she was in college. Well, first, here's the thing. She was talking to Batman earlier that um, night, and she revealed Harvey went to some college. And Batman is all like, Harvey's never mentioned about going to this college, and she's all like, well, he doesn't like the brat. And Batman's kind of suspicious. He's kind of like, he, he knows for a fact that Harvey did, well, he, he assumed that Harvey never went to that one college that she mentions and stuff. And he even asked Jim Gordon, you know, what college did he go to? And he's all like, well, he went to Gotham U. So Batman knows she's lying. And plus, like I said before, when he was down there in the basement, Batman saw like one of those little um, flags of the college and stuff. And since it wasn't Harvey's, it had to be hers. So that's how he figured out she was the holiday killer. And he sees her down in the basement burning all the evidence. And so she explains to him that when she was in college, she fell in love with Alberto. They got married and they had a kid. And when Falcone found out, he was pissed. He did not want her marrying some common type person. And so he made them divorce. And he was upset. Now, she said they had a child out of wedlock. But if they marry, how's that out of wedlock? But anyway, Falcone forced her to have an abortion. That traumatized her so much because she wasn't good enough on people that she was, like, bent crazy on stopping them. Years later, she married Harvey Dent. And then, so, for some, and then for some bizarre reason, she decided she's going to now, all these decades later... About two decades later, or maybe a decade and a half, she decides she's gonna get revenge. And what doesn't, when, so it's kind of like, okay, I get that as a motive, but what don't make no sense is kind of like, why'd you wait so late? Now, if you see in this picture, you can clearly see it is a man. That is Harvey. He did dress up as the holiday killer, but I suspect it was actually Two Face because his split personality was full in effect. We just didn't know it at the time. We didn't start hearing him talk to himself in his head until the second movie. And I'm guessing he killed Alberto because he knew of what happened between him and um, Gilda many, 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 many years ago. And that was just like pure jealousy and stuff. And so when she's telling Batman this, she literally asked Batman straight up. What are you going to do now? Are you going to turn me into Gordon or um, are you just going to keep looking at me with um, eyes of pity or something like that? He turns around and leaves. And then she asks him another question and it's about Harvey. And he's all literally like, Harvey's my friend. That's why, you know, um, this, this and that. And it's kind of like, wait, hold up. This woman has literally murdered an entire family. And another gangster who's not even related to that family 
and he lets her walk away scot-free? This is not Batman. Batman don't do that. Batman does not let the murderer get away. If he has a chance to arrest that person, he will. And he literally lets her get away all because he felt sorry about what happened between the abortion and her, fa uh, and her being married to what's his face and having to divorce him and stuff. This is not Batman. Batman does not do that. Like they, they made Batman into a punk in this movie. Now in the comic book, Batman is not there when she's giving her confession. She's literally just giving her confession to us, the audience, as we're reading it and stuff. So Batman in the comic book wasn't there to arrest her and stuff. So literally he kind of was like he figured out who the holiday killer was eventually, I believe. But you know, it, um, but he, maybe he didn't. I don't know. Anyway, but yeah, in the movie, it's just like he doesn't like arrest her or nothing. He literally lets her get away with that. And it's this kind of like I can't respect this movie. I can't respect how they made Batman is such a punk in this movie. I can't respect the fact that he let a criminal get away. I can't respect the fact that everybody pretty much knew who this murderer was except for him. And I just, and it what really upset me even more is that he couldn't even want to put the blame on Harvey all because he was his friend. And it's just like, like I said before, it's year two. I, I, I get it. He's not that great. It would have been fine if everybody didn't outshine him and stuff. And everybody outshined him. Even I think Alfred even assumed that the holiday killer might be um, Harvey and stuff. And he wasn't able to figure that out. And it's just like, literally Bruce Wayne was just, just strange in this movie, man. It's like there really was no point for him being in that movie. It should have just been Harvey or Catwoman trying to figure out who the holiday killer is. And it would have been a whole lot more interesting. I just don't get it. And I don't feel like this is a good movie. There was a lot of still quiet moments because there was no music in the background. And it would have been nice if it had some music to kind of like help you go along with the um, narrative and stuff. And there wasn't. It was just silent still. Like they were trying to make this into an uh, animated live action type movie. Something really dramatic. And like I said, if it was live action, then that would have been fine. Except for if they would have made Batman the same way they made him in this movie, then that would not be fine and stuff. And I just literally... <sighs> And I watched this movie over and over just to see if I could like force myself to like it. I couldn't even do that. And it's just like, you know, I haven't really been happy with none of the DC animated movies in a good while. Ever since they did the whole New 52 thing, that really killed it for me because I love the older ones in the past. And I love a lot of the animations in the um, older movies. And then once they went to the New 52, that's when things started to like dip down. They couldn't figure out like a nice balance of what they want between story, drama, emotion, and action. It was either just one or none or the other. And so when they did the whole rebirth, I'm like, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? But then I was not happy with the rebirth thing. I don't like that Superman movie. I don't like that Justice Society movie. I don't like this Batman movie. I hate the animation in all of them. Um, wait, what's that one I liked? I think I, there has been another one that came out. I'm pretty sure I recently just bought a DC movie. I don't know if I did or not. Crap, I don't know. I'm pretty sure they made a movie where the animation was different, but I can't remember right now. Mmm. Oh well. Oh, okay. Alrighty. Well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.